I was meant to be filming a video here today, um, but it hasn't gone quite to plan. So, change of plans, we're gonna visit eight Welsh stadiums. I was thinking of doing this video anyway if this one didn't plan out very well or pan out very well, which it hasn't. So, what I'm gonna do today is visit eight Welsh stadiums that I've never been to before in the north of Wales. The north of Wales, home to Wrexham, obviously, and that has obviously been massively spoken about, but today we are gonna visit eight Welsh stadiums that maybe you haven't heard of before. So yeah, just next to me here, Airbus Broughton UK FC. Um, the worst team in Europe this season in terms of top tier teams. They've not won a game, they've got minus points. I think they've only drawn two games in the league all season, meaning that they are own the only top tier team in the entirety of Europe without a win this season and that is this Welsh club right here and um, you actually see the Welsh flag up there with the flag of the UK and uh, France, Spain, Germany and then um, one for the inclusivity I think that is. Right it's time to leave this former works team for um, I think people who used to make aeroplanes Airbus brought in UK I mean it does make sense. Seeing that massive plane just take off then, like right next to the ground, I bet during a match, like the flyovers they get would be incredible, but even their badge has got like a, a plane on it. They're called the Wingmen, I do believe, um, that football club. But yeah, um, if anyone from Airbus Broughton UK FC is watching this video, I'd love to do a video about your club specifically. I've sent an email, I've sent a DM. Um, I know it's busy times for football clubs right now, um, but yeah, if I can come back and do a video about you specifically, that would be unreal. Next up in this Welsh ground hopping video, we are going to Buckley Town FC. This is Welsh ground hopping for you. This is literally where Google Maps is taking me for stadium number two. What is this? I've ne well, there's a lot of stadiums I've been to that are in oh god, industrial areas, but this doesn't feel right down here. Maybe it is. It says I'm a minute away if I swing round left here. Oh, it's shut. No way. Right, two seconds. I've got to get out. Welcome to the Globe or Croeso Ear Globe. Our next home game, I'm Gem. I'm so sorry, Welsh people. I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, obviously. But look. When you come ground hopping in Wales, it's obviously in two languages. And look, Buckley Town FC, that must be Buckley Town FC there. I actually did think I saw on the road sign that Bwickle, as it looks to me, is Buckley in Welsh. This place may not be as locked up as what I first thought. The like pedestrian gate is open, um, but I couldn't, couldn't drive in here, unfortunately, which probably means it's completely shut. But wow, this looks so nice. On a lovely sunny day like this, look at that nice North Welsh ground here. I think this is second tier of Wales. So I believe, remember when I went to Kevin Druids, made my video there on the Rock Stadium? I think these guys would play in the same league as them. Correct me if I'm wrong, North Walians. So Buckley Town, sadly locked. Just looking up where the next club is. What a name, let's get down there. Welcome to the home of Mould Alexandra. FC or in Welsh CPD YR with Wow, look at this stand here and then the dugout below. One, two, three, four, five, six seats. So if you've got a gaffer and an assistant, you've only got four other seats for, for subs, but um, there is a couple of guys here just doing some work on the stadium. Sally didn't want to be on the video. That's always um, the risk you have when you do these ground open videos, turning up somewhere. You might go to Buckley and it might not be open. Then you come to old lovely people here. Didn't want to be on the vlog, but they were telling me some interesting information. Michael Owen, when he was four or five years old, started here. They have many, many uh, youth teams and teams from like I think five years old all the way up to adults. I think 17 different teams they were telling me. They were founder members of the League of Wales, so I think restructuring of the Welsh leagues. And they even won the third tier last season. They'll be in the second tier next season. They also won like the FAW Cup, I think it's called, um, which is a trophy for, um, I think, non-league or amateur clubs within Wales as well. But this is so nice. Proper, proper, I'll say it again, non-leaguey vibey stadium, this one. Proper grass pitch and uh, these railings all the way around. 
absolutely love these grounds. That's two out of three so far. It's actually not bad for um, the start of the video. Um, but I think the next stadium that we're going to, I hope there's somebody there that can show me around, we can chat to. I think looking at the teams, I've not looked into them too deeply. I think they're the biggest team we'll be seeing today in terms of certainly in the most recent years anyway, what they've done and what they've achieved and the competitions they played in and stuff. Um, so yeah, let's get down there. Kilmarnock fans, look away now. I've come to the home of Connors Key Nomads. This team from Wales that play here, or I don't think they play here just now because of drainage issues from what I've been able to find out online. Um, I think they're sharing with actually one of the teams that we're going to see next. Let me just double check. I think we're going to see, yeah, so the next team that we go and see, I believe this big team here are actually playing at their ground because of drainage issues at this one from what i can work out but connor's key nomads yeah what a name that is they have a really good european record actually and they actually finished second in all of wales last season behind usual champions who often win it tns who we've actually seen play before so um yeah one of the biggest teams in wales right here behind me Really nice couple of groundsmen actually here. And since they don't play on this pitch anymore, I feel like it's probably okay to walk on. Yeah, it sounds like, um, yeah, they've moved away and they're now sharing with Flint. But yeah, this is the uh, home of the second best team in Wales, or was up until recently. And look, really interesting place actually, if you consider that in 1920, look, they were the champions of the Premier Division of Wales. And that was this stadium here, but now they don't play here anymore. This video title may have just changed from the former champions or from I visited eight Welsh stadiums and got inside to this could now be the former Welsh champions who now left their home. I don't know, something along those lines. I'm starting to think now. It's always the case with these videos. I never quite know what they're going to be called until I've edited it and watched it through. But an incredibly cool sounding name for the club. But yeah, sounds like a bit of a controversial one as to why they may have left. I'm not too sure. It's quite fitting really, isn't it, that they're called the Nomads, given that they are literally nomadic right now, um, in that they are leaving this place where they played for a number of years. I was just chatting to one of the groundsmen. He said that a little bit further through the town is where their old ground used to be. Um, now housing, I do believe, um, and now they're playing at their local rivals, Flint's ground um, for next season. But look at their European record. Look, here you go, Killy fans told you to look away. Look, you lost 3-2 against them back in the first qualifying round of the Europa League. Um, then they lost against Partizan, but by the sounds of things, again, chatting to the groundsman just there, they didn't play their European games here because of this stand is only 500 seated. I think you need more than that for UEFA competitions by the sounds of things, but look who they've played down the years. They've played Alishka, who played Rangers, remember that? They've played Sarajevo, Partizan, probably the biggest side, apart from Kili, obviously. Dinamo Tbilisi, Pristina as well from... Uh, from Kosovo but look they will even be playing in the conference league in 2023 2024 so it won't be long until the summer properly rolls around they're playing in that competition but where they will play I have no idea An award for the most scenic stadium location of the day goes to Flint Town United. Usually, a team will be called Flint United or Flint Town, won't they? Just one or the other, but not here. It's Flint Town United. They've got two, is it suffix? Prefix, prefix, suffix, I think suffix is the right word, isn't it? Um, when they have like a word at the end. Yeah, usually it'd be like Flint United or Flint Town, but Flint Town United in the stadium is just behind me and I think behind the lifeboat building, but you've got to come and check out the views first, haven't you? Hi there. I actually recognise those four towers in the distance. That is right near where um, Connors Key Nomad's old stadium was, and they have a huge rivalry from chatting to that groundsman in there with Flint Town United, who they now share with, which is the stadium behind me. But this water behind me, the River Dee, if you were to 
go across the River Dee. I think maybe that chunk of it there is like Wales, a tiny bit of it. But the majority of the land that you see now is England. That is the same chunk of land that if you kept going, you'd get to like Birkenhead, which is where Tranmere Rovers is. Um, so often forgotten about team in Merseyside, I suppose, in terms of league clubs because of Everton and Liverpool. Then you'd have to cross the River Mersey to get into Liverpool and then actually to get to like your Everton's and your Liverpool's and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is always part of the fun for me with these ground hopping videos. I never know who I'm going to meet, what I'm going to see along the way. There's a sick castle over there, 1200s that was first built. I'm Lee Fowler, I'm uh, currently the manager of Flint Town. Um, obviously we've been relegated so I don't know if I'll still be currently the manager but yeah, I'm still the manager of Flint Town. And so I've been investigating teams in North of Wales today. I've just been to, I think, your local rivals, Connors Key Nomads, who are going to be playing here for next season, I believe, as well as the other teams. How would you say um, North Wales football is doing right now, especially with Wrexham and stuff? Is it helping the other clubs around it as well? Um, I think obviously there's a, obviously a boom with some of my old clubs at Wrexham. They, that's going to have a massive boom, but I don't think it's going to filter into the Welsh systems. Um, as we talked about just before, is um, it's very restrictive or it's probably frowned upon really outside of the Welsh system, the Welsh league. Uh, there's not much fan base, especially as I said, just Connors Key. Um, you know, ourselves and Carnarvon and a few other teams have got a good fan base. But in terms of the growth of it, as we talked about, was, I think the Champions League money, the European money, mm -hmm. is what these clubs are playing for. Yep. And um, I live up in Scotland from England. Um, I feel like I've covered Northern Irish football a lot, I've covered a bit of Welsh football. I feel like the smaller sort of nations, if you like, within the UK are sort of forgotten about sometimes. Do you think more fans from other parts of the UK should come and watch football in Wales, Northern Ireland, and help out clubs like yourself who are not your TNSs, not your Connors Key Nomads, these ones that are qualifying for Europe and stuff. Yeah, I think, listen, people of the young generation now are, are, are spoilt really because they see the Premier League, it's all on their phones, their iPads, and they see the wealth and they see the, the glamour that goes with it. Sometimes your local community really doesn't really um, come out and support the town. Here they do, and to be fair to Carnarvon, I don't know if you've been there, the, the Coffee Army, they come out and support their, their local team. Yeah. Um, and it, it is important that they do come in, but the football clubs have got to engage with the town as well. The, the fans have got to resonate with the, with the team, and it's got to go hand in hand, really. Um, yes, it's not the same quality as the Premier League because you don't pay the same money, but there's still a good atmosphere to be had and a, a camaraderie and a community based spirit there. And so, what would you say is the best thing about this club? Obviously, you were just telling me about the new pitch that's been relayed and um, some of the views as well, just driving in. Looks like a nice place to come and watch football. Yeah, I think listen, I've, I've, this, I've only been here 12 months now and um, it is quite a uh, tight knit community. The volunteers are a massive part of this football club. I don't think this club would survive without them, of all the staff. Yeah, it's a lovely when you drive in and the night and the castle's on, the lights on, and the lights are on here. It's great. Um, yeah, it's just a good club. Obviously, it needs to be rebuilt properly. Yeah. Um, and try and get back in the Welsh Premier League. And um, last question for you then. I did touch on it just a minute ago, and I've just come from there. Connors Key Nomads, what's the sort of next season going to look like for yourselves and for them you'll both be playing here but are the teams rivals is that correct yeah in terms of if listen they're, they're rivals in terms of for the fans in terms of there's a um a bit of a spike towards each other but in yep. terms of football we're, we're miles away from Connorsky. Um the money they've got the champions league and you know we're in terms of football we're nowhere near it but fact, from a fan's point of view if you call them they, they got any fans i don't know um but ultimately, yeah, from a football point of view, they're, they're country miles ahead of this football club at the moment. Oh, that was quality. We've interviewed the first team manager. Again, like I say, you can go to like four or five stadiums in a row, meet people who don't want to be on camera. Then you come to one, first team manager's there, and they're always happy to talk. Um, I think first team managers, whenever you come across them, they're always like... Um, having to talk about the club, always doing media and interviews like after games and stuff. So yeah, their chance to promote the club. And what a cool one it is. Flint Town United. I'm absolutely going to have to come back for a game. That seems absolutely quality. But um, yeah, the gaffer there, he's played for loads of different clubs up and down England and Wales and managed a few different teams as well. So great to chat to him. We were talking off camera for ages as well there. Um, but yeah, onto the challenge. How many have we got into so far? Was it four out of five? I think it is um, at the moment. We got three more to visit beautiful day here in the north of Wales. Rhai o'n o'ch iwedi? Clywed sŵn velcro. 
Seed and go here, my father. Welsh football is such an enigma and so fascinating to me. Um, as someone who obviously grew up in England and now lives in Scotland and covers so much Scottish football, it's so interesting to see what like, Welsh football is all about, especially when you, when you consider like a team like TNS, who played Dundee in the SPFL Trust Trophy this season would play Champions League football almost every year if they win the league obviously and then you've got small teams like this look at this we're in another ground here if I'd have known that Welsh football would be this prolific um, I'd have been here way way sooner but as you can maybe able to see behind me just firstly before I tell you who we are and where we are just think of your favorite city in the world Maybe it's Glasgow or Edinburgh, if a lot of you watching this are from Scotland. Maybe you like a nice city break to Barcelona from time to time. Maybe you've been to Milan and you were wowed by the uh, incredible architecture and the San Siro and stuff. But, I bet not many of you said Saint Asaf. I was saying it right, Asaf. Um, this is the football team within Britain's second smallest city. Yeah, look not much of a city type stadium i just walked down this road uh, sorry drove down this road and there was no like gate locking off the ground or anything like that there's a few scallywags over there look at that like walking on top of the um the dugout and stuff but yeah this is the home of a football team in a city So this city, in inverted commas, has a oh, population of just over 3,000 people. Um, I've been to Ork in Lek a few times, Ork in Lektal, but they have a population of 3,000 people and that place is classified as a village. Um, and this club are currently, I do believe, if Wikipedia is to be believed, um, they're currently in the fourth tier of Welsh football. So essentially League 2, I oh know it's a little bit different, even in Wales, so um, the team that we just saw, Flint Town United, they got relegated from the top tier, the Premier Division, um, this season, so next season they'll be in the second tier, essentially the Champions but even in Wales the second tier is regionalized between north and south only the top tier is national um, so yeah then you come down and it's even more regionalized I suppose but they currently play in the fourth tier here um, this club god we're really getting through them now I think we've only got two more to visit and I've got inside all of them except one is that right I think that's right yep this is the road leading away from a football team in Britain's second uh, smallest almost said largest then city absolutely fascinating place welcome to welsh premier league winners as recently as 2009 but now currently dissolved real football club now i think because they're dissolved i don't think they use this stadium anymore which is why it's probably shut yeah i don't know if this stadium's completely abandoned now because real don't play here or maybe other teams play here i'm not too sure but as you can see look completely locked sounds like a really sad story and i'm not going to spend too long here we're going to get off to the next stadium just shortly um that is now what five of seven i've been in so far um but real football club there's their badge up there you can see it and it has real football club on the bottom and it's welsh um above um yeah i'm not sure if you could make that out on the gopro if not I'll, I'll just put the badge on screen for you to have a look at but um yeah really interesting sounding club if you're from real or you know anything about this club um i often do say that this video is about you learning from me as much as me learning from you as well sometimes um the people in the comment section below have had amazing comments in the past from things i would never have picked up on um let me know a little bit about real and if you know anyone who's connected with the club who could maybe do an interview the next time i'm down and potentially show me around this place it sounds like it's a team that needs a story completely of its own a little bit like um, Connor's Key Nomads as well I mean that seems very similar too this video could have had so many different titles the former Welsh champions that got dissolved um, the former Welsh champions in now don't have a home but play at their local rivals that's Connor Key Nomads loads of really cool talking points in this video so far um, let's see if there's another one at ground number 8 of the day no the last one we're not getting in oh, I've been ushered out of the eighth one of the day it's okay it's okay cheers mate see that is the risk sometimes you can you know go to flint town united and interview the first team manager who has also played for like wrexham and newport county and fleetwood and then um yeah you can come to prestatin town and um turn up and
and someone thinks you're really weird just for wanting to look in at their stadium. So, um, anyway, how many was that that we got in? Uh, right, we need to pull over. Hang on, I think we're near the beach, so gotta go check out the beach on a nice sunny day in Wales. Oh, there's worse places to come ground off in. Look at this. Wow, it's absolutely unreal. I think we got inside five grounds, did we not? Let's just double check because these days are long for me and I can never quite remember. Airbus, yes. Buckley, no. Mold, yes. Connors Key, yes, technically. Flint, yes. Asaf, Saint Asaf, yes. Real, no. Prostatin, no. So that's three no's, five yeses. I will show you on a map right now um, where we have gone today um, as you can see it's fairly near to Liverpool all this North Wales area and um, obviously the big story of this whole area in terms of football in recent times has been Wrexham um, although obviously Wrexham play in the English League they are sort of the biggest club of the region and I've done a couple of videos about Wrexham before I've seen them play also did like a video about their history and stuff um, and it's really fascinating even though they played in the English system for a long time they still used to compete in the Welsh Cup and so they'd be in like the third tier of England back in like the 70s and 80s they'd win the Welsh Cup they'd like qualify for the Cup Winners Cup so they'd be playing in Europe um, although they were like playing in a different league it, it was weird but it's, it's a cool interesting video so you should check that out but yeah look at this we're in Prestatyn right now which I suppose is like a nice touristy place for um, people of this area to come actually really really nice and um, there's like a cafe up here and I've um, I've not really sat down and just chilled for a while. I've got a video to edit that I'm trying to get up for today as well, um, reacting to my Scottish predictions from earlier this season. So I'm gonna come up here, go for a coffee, charge my phone up as well. I'm now back in Scotland after a couple of days filming uh, down south. Great video. I really, really enjoyed checking out these North Welsh stadiums. Um, I've never explored enough Welsh stadiums I don't think but what was your favorite in this one five out of eight we got inside that's a pretty good success rate actually um, probably my favorite for the ground and the scenery and the access all three were probably Flint Town United cool name as well and um, with the town and the United good to chat to the gaffer there Lee good to see the stadium get inside and also the surroundings really nice too um, Welsh football something I'm definitely gonna have to look more into and do more games at and do more videos at again if you have any information on any of the clubs featured in this video if you work at any of the clubs do get in touch and let me know. I'd love to come down and make videos about them all specifically. Um, but yeah, really, really cool video. I absolutely love these exploration ones. I've got a busy weekend ahead of me back here in Scotland now. Tonight's Friday, today's Friday. I'm gonna upload this video today that you're watching. I've got a game tonight, a game Saturday, a game Sunday. So I think three or four videos coming up in a row, including this one you're watching now. I've mentioned a few of my Welsh videos in this video. Kevin Druid's Rock Stadium. If you haven't seen that, one of the most unique stadiums I've ever been to, especially in Britain, maybe the most unique. And maybe you haven't even seen it or heard of it before. I'll leave that on screen. I'll also leave my Wrexham video on screen um, where I looked around the town, interviewed some fans and just like got a feel for how things are right now. Um, it, was, it was a while ago now, it was this season, um, but it was before they got promoted. So um, yeah, do go and check them out. If you're into Welsh football, just click on one right now. They're both on screen. Be massively appreciated if you could keep watching and watch one of those. Thank you so much and goodbye.